Hello everybody, it's Marla Martinson and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid and I am here with the wonderful David Wygand. Hey, hey Marla, how are you? I am so good, thank you so much for coming back because uh, for you, you guys have probably seen the very controversial video that David and I did about dating tips for men a month or two ago and we've gotten a lot of comments, a lot of views and it was older men dating younger women and David gave some amazing tips and today we're going to talk about women because uh, I'm a matchmaker and my clients are the men but I've got to match them to the women and uh, <laughs> alright we're going to get some really great tips from David on how you ladies can be more successful in dating. All right, now we have a viewer comment question. Actually, a viewer of the, of the other video wanted to ask David a question. Her name's Catherine, so Catherine, this is for you. Uh, I am an older woman who is 55. I'm in good shape, but I've been in love with a man who is 11 years younger, and he left me for someone more age appropriate. This sucks. I'm sad, but I'm not attracted to people my own age. Yikes! Can I ever change? Would love to know this answer. Also, I have a wandering eye. When I was out with my younger guy, I never stayed by his side. I was all over the bar dancing with other men. I must have drove him nuts. I want to change this behavior as well. And I get this uh, a lot where women will say, well, I've been dating a 30-year-old and the woman's 45 or 50, or they're not attracted to older guys. Or So what's your take? What can you tell Catherine? You know, everybody's always attracted to something else. You know, it's just, it's not even just Catherine. It's just, who cares? If you want to go out and have sex and dance all over the bar and don't judge yourself, you know, I mean, I'm not judging you. I mean, I'm certainly not going to date you. I see some 45 year old woman stuffing herself in her jeans, dancing all over the bar. Um, <laughs> turns me off, you know, but not what I'm looking for because I'm not a bar person. I don't drink. Okay. So I don't care for 25-year-old, 45-year-olds dancing all over the bar. That's not my thing. You know, it's right. like alcohol is not my thing. That's not my lifestyle. So if she wants to go and screw a guy 15 years younger and have great sex and have fun, go for it. Nobody's, nobody can tell you no. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment in life, you know, and it's so funny. That's what I hear all the time from people. I'm a 45-year-old woman. I look like I'm 35, and I'm sleeping with a guy that's 28 years old. Well, good for you as long as he's – I'm going to put it bluntly. As long as you eat your pussy good and you're coming and you're having a great time screwing him in bed, then good for you because you deserve great sex. All right. Well, you know, and this is funny because I – I was talking about it with a matchmaker today. We were Skyping. She's out in Arizona, and we said every single person that comes to us says they look younger than they are, and that's why they should be oh. dating younger. So it's all, all we're do. all Dorian Gray, right? <laughs> they all do. Everybody, they lead with emails. I'm 49, but I look like I'm 39. Who gives a shit? How about you're 49 years old, and you're cool, and you're evolved, and you're a great person? I, don't, I, I mean, people lead with their age. I never tell people my age. I never walk around and go, I'm blankety blank years old, but I look blankety blank, but my dick still works like a blankety blank. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's such an insecurity. It's When it comes down to it, women are always asking for permission to do things. It's like almost like if she wants to be a drunk and act like a slut at a bar and dance and make out with some guy on the bar and do body shots. Who cares? Go for it, girl. Have fun. Life, you only live once. Stop judging yourself. Go, and girl. And seeking yeah. approval. Yes. Well, I, this is something that's coming up with men and women. They just can't accept the fact that they're older. I mean, we all get older. It's not easy. When, look, when I look in the mirror, it's certainly a shock sometimes when I see, you know, the marbly stuff under my arms when they used what, to be What, the moochie nice. cooch? You know what I mean? What, yeah. It's like, what's happening here? But I just don't look as often. You know, I just don't don't go there and, and just look. But I think, like you said, if you're an evolved person, so do some work on yourself, some spiritual work, love your life, love yourself, and you're not going to be so focused on age and, and you know, saying, I look younger, I, I really don't act 50, I don't know what that means, um, but it's it's a big problem, and, and it makes me, it makes my job hard, and it makes me sad to see all these people staying alone because they're grasping for something, they're not, you know, progressing along. They're not enjoying themselves, it's like... Enjoy yourself. You know, we've got to enjoy yourself. It's enjoy your body. 
You know, it's have sex. Pick a lover. Find a lover. Be sitting home with your Hitachi magic wand. You know, gearing that and plugging that thing up. I mean, just have fun. Put it out there. I mean, I was flirting with some girl today. Um, I just ran in, ran an errand. We started flirting. I was just like, oh, I'm not really into it, you know. But like, you know, it was nice. It was nice. She flirted. At least she did something. It was nice you know, to I flirt, enjoyed, right? I enjoyed communicating with her. I didn't need to see her again. Like, I enjoyed the moment we were sharing. I enjoyed the five minutes we were sharing. At the look, you know, at the end, she goes, "What's your name?" I told her my name, and she goes, "So great talking to you," you know. And it's like, and it was. But I, you know, I drove away, and I think to myself, God, her body would have been so much fun to play with, but. <laughs> I'm just not in the mood, you know, I'm just not there, I'm not there emotionally, I wasn't there where I needed to be with her, but it was so nice to just do that, to exchange it, she made herself open, you know, and that's what you got to do, and not every encounter, not everything is going to ever work out, but just make yourself open, because that's what life's all about, we need each other, men need women, women need men, everybody's got to stop being in this, like, hole that we live in. And then I guess not putting a number on it, not keep reaffirming, oh, I'm not attracted to older people or older guys. Just get out there and, and flirt and have fun and see who, who you're attracted to. And so, just, yeah. And go have sex when you need it. <laughs> well, sounds like, like Catherine's get, you know, doing pretty good there. <laughs> she is. Catherine's good. Catherine, and, you know, I just, hope, good. I, just hope, I just hope he's giving her orgasms. You know, I hope he's just not a... <laughs> Hope he's not Mr. One Pump. Well, you know, he, went or, for, he left her for somebody you know closer to his own age. So, well, she can go get out there and get an, another one, another boy toy. So, um, just give me a couple tips for the ladies. Also, in uh, I see in Los Angeles, especially beautiful women who go they're going through their thirties, they're going through their forties, never been married, um, still looking for the guy. And uh, what do you think is going on there, and what can they? Do to adjust. Oh, what do be you see open. There? It's like I hate that word. I hate that you know that word is such a big word. But be open. I mean, you're in your 30s and your 40s. Just you know, look at being single as this. Have this mindset. Being single is the opportunity to meet someone you've never met before. In order to meet that person you've never met before, you got to do things differently. So stop texting. Stop being on your phone in public. Take your iPhone. Shove it up your ass when you're out in public. I mean, literally, put it in your back pocket. <laughs> You know, go out there and be more present because men are looking at you. They just suffer from pre-traumatic stress syndrome, which is this brand new disease, okay, that the thought of approaching a woman causes such stress in a man that he's not able to go and do anything. So you've got to be open. You see a great looking guy in Whole Foods or Starbucks, smile, bring that feminine energy out, you know, say hi, do something, make yourself available because if you're going to wait. For the guy to approach you, he doesn't exist. 10% of the men have the balls to approach women. The other 90% have a monkey jerking them off, self, jerking him off in his brain going, oh, God, I'm so afraid. What do I say? What do I do? So be open. Smile. When you go out at night, look around. Smile at men. That way you don't have to be on, on Tinder and Hinge and OK Cupid and Plenty of Fish and spend all these hours out you know, on, on the internet getting absolutely nowhere. There's so many opportunities every single day if you just open your eyes and you just make yourself available. That's a great point because when I walk around, I do. I see every, everybody's like looking down at their phone, so you couldn't approach them if you wanted to. It's, it's like we're just, we've got to break that. We've got to set some boundaries there. And you could run into a pole. <laughs> oh, please. The phone is the, is the biggest crutch anybody ever has. I mean, people love their phone. They're in love with their phone. They're in love with it, you know, I because left, it enables listen, them. I, it, I went to lunch the other day. I left the house and I went down to Whole Foods and I had to go to the bank and I realized I forgot my phone. It felt like I was panicking. It, and it, yeah, it no. we do. We're, it's so weird. And then I walked in the house and my husband said, you forgot your phone. <laughs> I said, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. We forget our phone and it's like, Oh my God, I left, I turned my phone off, you know, and it's like, I turned my, I, you know, when my daughter sleeps over, I get to turn my phone off. It's so nice, you know, uh, it's like, we are so Pavlovian yes. in our world and it's all about the phone. We're constantly looking at it. We're driving in traffic. We hear a text. We have to look at it. It's a fucking text. It's some SMS message from somebody who has to tell us something that's really not that important at that moment, but we are so obsessed with it. And then when we're out, 
we're constantly texting people that aren't there and not present with it. So be present to your life because I truly believe that love is available 24-7. It's right around the corner, but we just need to be more aware of it because if you look back to the 80s and the 90s when there was no such thing as a phone, I was always flirting with people 24-7 because I was just there was nothing else to do but to flirt. Now, I'm in line at Tender Greens. Even I'll look at my phone, and, and I love to flirt. I was talking to Bruce Starr this morning. He, he interviewed me for his show, and he was saying, Hey, Marla, when you and I were dating back in the day, we didn't have text we didn't have phones we didn't have that there was mystery it, it, we weren't like tracking each other so we we thought okay oh David if I went out with you I'd say well I don't know where he is right now what's going on or you'd say well where's Marla instead of tracking him oh what are you doing right now and and it made a little more mystery you're more excited you pick up the phone your landline and call him oh, and yeah. it worked better I think I, I everybody was in relationships back before these cell phones yeah they really weren't it's funny I called it dialing di <laughs> All right, so when I was in my 20s, okay, and I wanted to get laid, right, I called it dialing for vagina, right, you know, <laughs> and it was like a funny little ritual on Sunday night where, you know, because I was a 23-year-old player in New York City having fun with women, and I would meet women and get phone numbers on the back of, on the back of matchbook covers, and on Sunday nights, I would just interview, you know, I would just dial and interview and see which one of the phone numbers I got during the course of the week I had the biggest connection with, you know, and they were game to have sex too and it was just so much fun and now it's like it's unreal like women now they can't do anything it's funny you know that there's an application called hinge mm -hmm. right which i'm on and it has my website on it davidwygant.com so i get matched a lot because of my cute picture but then when i say something to them Half of them will come back. Half of them will ignore me. The other half will be like, are you on this for clients? Oh. No, I'm not on this to get more clients. It's Women don't even enjoy don't even enjoy the mystery anymore. They Google everything. They Google men. They Google dates. They Google everything. And the beauty of meeting somebody is the mystery of it. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's unveiling. It's, you know, unwrapping this gift of this luscious man that came, you know, into your life right now who you could fall in love with. But the problem is most women act like Sherlock Holmes and their CSI and, you know, Crime scene investigators, they, they've already made a decision about a man before they even go out with them. Yes, and and then the list with the height and the income and the car and the looks and the dark hair or the dark eyes or the and all this, which men do too, but I think I always tell women to be more open. Do you hear that a lot about, I think a lot of women are missing out because of the height thing. Oh, please, height, you know, good things come in small packages, you know, it's like, don't worry about the up and down, worry about the width when he gets naked, okay, you know, I mean, you know, this, this short guy could be so well hung, and he could have the magic tongue, and he could be a great lover, and he could be like this nurturing, amazing soul, and he's five foot six, I'm sorry, I'm six foot two, there's not many of us running around that have a personality, there's you know, there's not, I mean, the average American male is five nine, I know, so I you're, so I mean, like, you are in demand, David. <laughs> yeah, I'm in demand, but I'm not even interested right now. So, Ladies, leave a comment if you want me to match you with David. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, if, if it's, you know, you know me, I like them short and petite, you know, because oh. But my you're thing. open. I love that about you. You're 52. You, you know, you don't try to say that you, you know, you're 52, but you look 32. You look fantastic. You take care of yourself. You're an evolved man and you're open to women age appropriate. And I love that. And you're open to life and love and, and, uh, the whole mystery of it. And I really appreciate you giving your tips. Yeah. I don't look at age. I mean, I've dated women of all ages. I never look at age. You know, I look at beauty from, if I'm attracted to the outside, uh, you know, that to me lasts, honestly, about three seconds because I've always dated beautiful women. So to me, it's like I look at a woman and, and I look at the beauty on the outside and I'm, after three seconds, I'm like, great, you're beautiful. you got a great body. I'd love to play with it. But let's see what you got inside. And that's where all the attraction builds for me because I'm not going to play with your body if your mind isn't great. I'm not going to play with your body if you're not evolved. I'm not going to play with your body and look at that beautiful face if you're not nurturing and loving. You know, So you get more beautiful. And this is something that with women I always notice too. When I get to know women, their face changes to me. They have, uh, I call it face changing. You know, it, it's The more I get to see them, the more I can see their soul, the more I can see their essence of who they are, the more I can see their feminine being. 
So they get more beautiful in certain lights and certain moments. I could see the different moods and emotions and tap into that energy that they really are. So to me, it's, it's, I don't look at age. I, I look at lifestyle and, you know, you got to be beautiful and you got to be in great shape. But man, it's your brain and your mind and your soul's got to be open. So Mm -hmm. if anybody's interested, you got to have those qualities because that's really more important to me. That's great. I love it. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Anybody has any questions, leave them below and we'll ask David next time. See ya.